What is an inpatient rehab? So this provides a mechanism for a user, whether it's alcohol or drugs, to get off of it, to, so to abstain, but not only just abstaining, but also to learn new ways of life, new ways of coping with stress. That's the general idea, is to get them out of their element, because it's very hard to quit when you are still in your normal living environment. So getting the user out of that environment into uh, a rehab with closed doors, not, not necessarily a lockdown, but to be with like-minded individuals and out of their normal routine puts a kind of a bump in the road for them and allows them to kind of re-gauge where they are, have the big questions of why it is that they're using. So this is where you, rehab can be very useful simply by um, removing them from their environment. It also puts them into a uh, culture of people who are like-minded, a community of people really, of like-minded people who are all battling the same thing at the same time. And addiction is the illness of isolation and segregation, whereas recovery, the opposite, is about uh, connection. And rehab allows for connection. A good, healthy lifestyle it is to have that, it's important to have connection with others. So this is something that I've learned personally in, in my own recovery. So rehab provided the opportunity not only for me to get out of my normal element, but to be with other people. And that's where the healing starts, at the very least. So that's the simplest part. The other parts about a rehab is that now comes the educational part. So teaching the users about proper coping mechanisms in life. So I just mentioned about community. There's also recreation, balancing things uh, in life. In rehab there's an education side of things, but there's also recreation, time for, for fun, games, uh, exercise, sports, music, whatever it is. So that's also important and that hopefully will give them a life a uh, long lesson about balancing in life, to be happy in life. We not only need to have communication and connection with others, but to have balance with recreation. The other one is the educational component of a rehab. So this is where we try to rewire the thinking of people. So it's, and I've been through this myself, and it takes time. This is why rehabs of uh, 21 days uh, or a month generally are not that great as, compo as compared to a three month rehab because it takes time to undo the behaviors I learned during my addiction. And so the educational component of that can include things like mindfulness, so being aware, learning to be aware of my own thoughts and thinking, um, to listen better, use my hearing, you know, listen better. That's something that I found that was very weak. Uh, I think I probably started off that way in life. But I've noticed the same behavior amongst other young people, uh, amongst young people, is that listening skills uh, need to improve. Learning how to cope with stress, to recognize when we're feeling stress, and to realize that we can't replace that with the crutch, which is what I became accustomed to, and that's, that was using my drug of choice as a way of self-medication to sort of avoid the hard feelings of, of the stress that I was going through in my life. That's the most important part, I think, in rehab, is to unlearn the maladaptive behaviors like the poor management, poor coping with stress and to replace them with more functional ways, looking at my stress, breaking it down like what can I control and what can I not control and not worry so much about the things I can't control, let it go, dismiss it. Of the things I can control, write them down, to put them in a list, prioritize them and then as I said to recognize when I'm feeling the stress and so at least I know what I'm going through and to voice that to others being connected, this is the importance of it, is to ex explore what I'm feeling and express it. Now I know with um, young men, we think that what is tough is to not show emotion, but it's actually tougher to share what you're feeling. And uh, that was a big lesson for me in my rehab. Good. Somehow it dawned on me that people can lecture me and criticize me for my opinions, but they cannot lecture me or criticize me on how I feel. And sharing my feelings about what, I, especially when I'm going through a hard time, that takes guts, takes effort. But by sharing how I'm feeling, it takes the edge off on me. It, 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 it allows me to start healing. Something happens uh, when I share my problems with people. Mindfulness is another way of you know, being aware of myself and being aware of others. It helps take the edge off. Uh, meditation is another one. 
Uh, regardless of whether it works or not, I, all I know is that sometimes when I'm under high stress, if I just take, remove myself from that situation, for example, driving in traffic and everyone around me is driving like an animal, you know, I try to with, withdraw myself from that and just realize people are going to behave. Um, it's a, just a fact of life and to just kind of calm down and relax and just remove myself and deep, breath, deep breathing. That's a form of meditation. Of course, there's a lot more complicated ways to meditate, but that's the general idea is to remove ourselves from the situation and breathe. Um, <clears throat> and then prayer. Uh, regardless of being religious or not, uh, for some reason, prayer seems to take the edge off. Again, it helps to uh, dispel or, dis or to um, disassemble some of the stress that I'm feeling in life. And those moments where I'm going through hell and I'm scared. Uh, you know, there was a time I sat in a prisoner's box and uh, didn't know about my, my, my future. I was totally uncertain. Well, guess what? I was praying. So, you know, that's one extreme. But uh, I've found that when I was going through very difficult times in rehab, so that sometimes just uh, a prayer in my own style, not a religious way, uh, help just take the edge off. That's the whole thing that, that I like to bring up is that it, that's prayer, meditation, and mindfulness are some of the tools that we can use. Speaking of tools, so rehab teaches us tools of coping, uh, tools to avoid relapse. Uh, I've already discussed some of this already in this, in this uh, recording. But other tools, when a person is considering relapsing, to play the tape out, that's, um, that's the tool. So what that means is to think ahead of what's going to happen. So if I'm entertaining a thought about relapsing, I think to myself, well, what's going to happen? And I've learned this from a few relapses, but I know that I'm going to end up in that dark, dingy place where I'm lying and deceiving again to others, and I don't feel so good about myself. Even the high itself will not be as good as I was hoping because it's a big downer when I know that I've disappointed myself and people around me. And then there's the whole anxiety of it all. Uh, creating anxiety for myself, well that's exactly what I'm trying to avoid when I'm in, in, in treatment, in recovery. I don't want to create more problems for myself. So that's an example of thinking down the down by playing the tape out and realizing what's going to happen. Then I have to hide up or explain why my urine test is going to be positive. Just another example there. So it took me several uh, goes to realize uh, you know, why it is that relapses just aren't worth it, that I'm going to end up in a worse off place, that I'm going to create more anxiety for myself. So this is a great example of an awesome tool to use. Uh, and again, it's called playing the tape out. Uh, rehabs. You know, there comes a time where a person is ready to be discharged and um, not everybody is fully ready. They may say it, they may smile and everybody agrees and everybody's uh, happy for them, but once they're back on their own, that's a real t tough test for them. So hopefully they've learned what in rehab, in rehab will help them, but they need ongoing care. So rehab is not just the end all and be all, they need to have after care, after rehabilitation care. And for myself, what I do is I attend a group once a week as a uh, self-help group. Uh, it's, it's in my aftercare group. It's mediated by uh, an addiction physician. Not everybody needs that. Just a drug treatment, uh, a drug treatment counselor is is good enough for that. Um, but as a physician, we need to have addictionists there. So the point is, though, is we need to have enduring care, uh, ongoing, and I need to continue to be open and honest and candid. And that's something I didn't mention in rehab, but that's a super important uh, facet of uh, facet of of recovery, is to be able to own up. Uh, be honest and share myself candidly with others in that group and I've extended that to my self-help group every Wednesday and we know each other very well and we can pick up on when there's issues and so that's that's a good healthy recovery and the funny thing is the things I've mentioned right now are not just good for recovery they're also good for happiness thanks for listening if you or a loved one are looking for help with substance abuse call our 24 7 helpline at 1-800-615 1067. A caring addiction advisor is awaiting your call.